Hey, it's 908 here on the Big 550 KTRS. And if you see Senator McCaskill around and you notice, boy, how skinny are you, Senator? One of the reasons, not along with her eating right and exercising correctly, one of the reasons is because she met our next guest, Ladies and gentlemen, Charles D'Angelo. Charles, welcome back to Big 550K. Great to be here, McGraw. It's my privilege. You got it. Normally, we don't have enough time. We got a little time to stretch our legs and uh, talk to you. We want to do that because it is uh, January 4th, and a lot of people have a lot of uh, New Year's resolutions, and one of those New Year's resolutions is to lose weight and to uh, get healthy. Uh, But before we do that, you are a weight loss coach. Exactly. Uh, you went to Dismet when you graduated? No. Oh, bad, went, bad, bad. You you went to visit CBC to visitation. I wish I would have went to visitation. Well, <laughs> man, that would have been a nice place. Maybe not three hundred sixty pounds, but now it would have been a nice place. No, I went to CBC. CBC. I ap- a thousand apologies. Uh-huh. Uh, when did you graduate, CBC? Uh, Two thousand and four. Two thousand and four. Okay, and you're a, a weight loss coach, and you and I have worked together for uh, two years now, at least. Yeah, that's right. Um, and um, I lost a whole bunch of weight, and it's it's really a whole lifestyle change and it's really fascinating and we'll get to that um and you've written a book that's right is the book out yet yes the think book. and grow thin in fact i got an email yesterday from two folks that went out to the west county location they're actually sold out west county west uh, county uh, barnes and noble barnes and noble okay uh, amazon shipping it out every single day it's been in the top 100 of diet books consistently since it's been out it's been out about a week week and a half okay so it's, it's thinking really grow- well think-, think and grow thin grow thin think and grow thin they can go to amazon type that in or they can go to tagtbook.com and find it there can i get it on my new ipad and everything else i don't believe there's any digital versions yet okay they're talking about it because le- many 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 people have written reviews up on Amazon saying, this is a great book, giving it five stars, and they say it would be awesome if it was a Kindle right. version or if there was a digital version, so they may consider that. Uh, also, did uh, I hear that uh, Time Magazine did a review of Think and Grow Thin? Not a review. I was quite blessed and fortunate. Of course, Clint- President Clinton's foundation has a lot of interest in confronting and combating the childhood obesity epidemic that's facing our nation, and he endorsed my book. Uh, they did a piece about some interesting reads that he's picked up and endorsed, and my book was one of them. So, Bill, mm-hmm. President Clinton has read Think and Grow Thin. And he endorsed it, yes. And he's actually pretty thin these days. He looks really good. From what I understand, he's uh, really engaging in a plant-based diet where he's eating a lot of raw, healthy vegetables, fruits, keeping his diet very natural and yeah. clean. You uh, graduated from CBC in 2004. Four, at some point in your life, you weighed over 300 pounds. That's part of the message of the book is that I've been there. This isn't a book coming from a guy that's been Mr. Fitness and has always been lifting weights and has been athlete of the year and varsity player on all the teams. I was 360 pounds by the time I was 17. I grew up in a family that was plagued by addiction on my mom's side, alcoholism on my father's side, food addiction coming from an Italian background. Food equal love, food equal pleasure. So I grew up learning those associations. And by the time I was 15, 16 years old, I had realized my behavior wasn't congruent with who I was. I was very bright in school. I I was always looking for great role models and teachers. Yet I would come home and eat a box of Little Debbie cakes and two glasses of milk. And my health was starting to suffer and fail. So I had to change the way I was thinking about food. And I believe that everything else that's out there is missing that component. That's what my book brings to the table is that piece that's been missing. There's no lack of diet books. There's no lack of exercise programs. But what's been lacking is how you think about food, how you think about exercise in the right way, not what to do, but how to do. Go back. Go back to when you were 360 plus pounds. What was the trigger? What was the thing that said this is enough? I had a series of events come about. One was quite dramatic in that I had scarfed down an entire pizza when I was about 17 years old one night, Uh, pizza, box of breadsticks, and a two liter of regular soda. And I woke up at about 2.30 in the morning, and my vision was totally blurred. Now, I have to predicate all that on, I was waking up in the middle of the night, and I felt my nose was running, and I would rub my under my nose with my finger, I'd wake up in the morning, and there would be dried brown blood on my hand. And I figured, well, it must just be my sinuses, right? As a kid, you put a lot of that into denial, and you just try to forget about it. But after that health scare with my vision, I had then thought, oh, my gosh, my grandmother had suffered from diabetes. And I remembered her saying that her doctor said that she could go blind over time. She was overweight, too, my father's mother, and that if she didn't change her habits, she could end up losing her vision. And that scared the heck out of me. That day, that next day after that health scare, I was in a classroom in which I was taking an exam, 
and it was an air-conditioned classroom at CBC. And I started perspiring profusely, and the sweat drips were actually landing on the exam below and, and starting to make the ink run. And my heart was racing, beating in my chest, just thumping out of my chest. My hands were clammy. I won't ever forget the nurse would oftentimes walk by the school, the class door, and motion for me to come out. And I wouldn't leave the class because I knew what she wanted to do. She wanted to take my blood pressure or weigh me. So I get it. I've been there. When all these people come to me that feel like no one knows how they feel, they feel stuck, desperate in a place they hate, I know what that feels like. And I know what it feels like to be scared. And my conviction stems from that, knowing how painful that is and knowing how to get out of it. And that's what I teach people to do. You have t- you have worked with thousands of people one-on-one. That's right. Uh, it's really quite extraordinary. Your your list of before and after pictures, I mean, it, that just in- inspires you walking in to, to meet you for the, for, the, for the first time. It, it, it's inspiring and somewhat intimidating, somewhat. Um, but, but since this is New Year's, and uh, there are people who are making a lot who've just now gotten back to running or going to the gym or looking at eating right. Give us a couple of helpful hints to sort of kick kickstart our uh, weight loss. I'd say the most important thing a person can do is realize that they have to accept themselves as a fit and healthy person and look at this as a matter of personal responsibility. Earlier in your show, you were talking about how, with uh, Dr. Jeffrey Lowell how important personal responsibility is in our nation now. And I think that true commitment And true ownership of this stems from the idea that it's within your control to change and that only you can change it. You have to come to the realization that you are where you are because of a long series of behaviors, choices that you've made. And because you realize that, you know you can change the way you are if you'll adopt a new set of healthy lifestyle habits, ones that are not that difficult to follow. Where to start? First, Get on a very structured set of foods. In my book, I outline a very specific 12-week program. Here's exactly what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat, weeks one and two. Come back to the book for weeks three and four. You make slight changes. Along that, Alongside that, I tell them exactly what to do with the exercise. So not only are they knowing what to do with food and what exactly to do with exercise, because let's face it, it's overwhelming all of the information that's out there. Right. All the data of here's what to eat, this guy says, here's what to eat, this guy says, and they're both in conflict. Right. I simplify it. There's no lack of information, but I'll tell you exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. All you have to do is make the decision to start to think about these things in the right way. So learn how to disconnect emotion from food. Learn how to totally disconnect it and get your mind in the right place. Get the control center together so that you're thinking about food in the right way. You're thinking about exercise in the right way rather than just well, I'm going to resolve myself to lose 30 pounds this month, and come February, you fall into that huge percentage that never f- reach their fitness goal or their in, health goal. In your plan, how many shots am I going to take in my stomach of um, <laughs> female placenta blood? Absolutely zero. Zero? It's, it's all everyday food. It's all real food you get at the grocery store, which is really how, easy. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. How many grapefruits do I have to eat in the morning? Absolutely none. Not really. None, okay, none. all right. No, it's all real food. And the point that I'm making is exactly what you're saying. Let's face it. It's not rocket science to lose weight. But so many people want to justify their failure by making it overcomplicated, frankly. Uh, there was some literature that just recently came out that was done saying that uh, this group of doctors say a metabolic problem is why people that have lost weight then gain the weight right. back. Yeah. Let's face it. The reason people get fat again is because they start making the wrong <laughs> choices. Are you kidding me? I, I sent an email out to one of my clients that sent me this, and they said, oh, my gosh, did you see this? Because there's a lot of fear after a person reaches their goal right. that they're going to gain weight back, like it's something outside of their control. Right. And that comes back to exactly what I'm saying about owning this. You can make your life whatever you want it to be. I was very, very blessed by God to find my vocation at a very young age. And what I believe my mission is to do is to bring the realization to people that change is within your control. You just have to make the decision. And this idea that all of a sudden we've discovered some evolutionary process that just now has been realized that the reason people are fat is because after they've lost weight, the body really wants to be unhealthy. Right. Wake up, <laughs> get real, start eating right, and start exercising. Here, Here's something that's really quite fascinating about this and going through it um it's interesting when when you don't drink if you're an adult you're talking about alcohol alcohol let's just do alcohol but also eating too um when you don't drink and you're in a social environment and and you go to someone's house and they say can i get you a drink no thank you no 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 what do you want to drink 
no, thank you, I'm fine. Same thing with food or over the holidays. If you go to somebody's house and you say, oh, hi, how are you? Would you like a piece of pie? No, thank you. No, what, to, what? which pie would you like? No, thank you, I'm fine. No, which pie? They almost force you. How dare you say no to my pie? There's almost a peer pressure You've to got, eat. And not there almost is, there indeed is. I hear that every day in my office. Folks come in and they say that I'm really, really working hard, and I'm afraid if I go to this event that I'm going to be forced into making decisions yeah. I don't want to make. You have to have boundaries. Much of a person's problem comes from a lack of boundaries. They don't know where to draw the line. If a person tells you, well, uh, I want you to have this despite you not wanting to have this, you have to understand that that's their issue, not yours. Right. And you simply stay true to what you're doing. You stay true to the structure in place. You stay true to your goals so that you're able to reach your goal. And oftentimes, it's a matter of envy and jealousy that you have so much willpower and discipline yeah, it's really interesting. that the other people then feel a little less yeah. because of you striving to make changes. Even if you're not necessarily succeeding, that you're just really working to improve yourself. That can make some other people feel inferior. It's really interesting. It's almost like a drug dealer. I was in, I, I won't say where I was because I don't want to dump on the place, but I was at this place the other day, and I'm sitting there reading a magazine, and I don't think, I, I don't really, I stay in my own world. I don't really think people are recognizing me where I'm at and things. Well, after and, you're on this show a couple of times, you'll be recognized everywhere. <laughs> I, I get recognized. People <laughs> say, I heard you, I'm a girl. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying was, I'm sitting reading a magazine, and there's some people talking over to my right, and one of them says, I looked up because they said something that was very strange, and she says, oh, I know I need to lose weight. And I said, what? I, I didn't even say anything. But people sometimes, just because of your presence, they can feel a little inferior. So if you're really – let's say you've lost 50, 60 pounds, and you walk into a party – and this person's overweight, and they know they need to change, right. not for you, but for their own reasons, that can create in them an in, in, inferior complex and also make it very, very difficult for them to be around you because then they're constantly reminded so really, of what they need to do. It's a really interesting mental game you play with your, yourself and your friends, and it's really interesting, and it's amazing. People don't even realize they're doing it, but they're they're forcing the, the drink or the, the, You've the got cheeseburger on you and so, when you're like, look, I, leave me alone. I don't want it. And so many people this time of year that are making these resolutions come at it and they go and join a gym or they start changing their foods. Right. But they miss that third leg of what I call this three-legged stool, and that is how you're thinking about it. So that you're disciplining your mind so that when you are in those environments, you know how to handle it. And in my book, I tell you exactly how to handle yeah. it. I tell you exactly how to think about food, how to think about exercise so you can stick with it. Two more things I find interesting about losing weight and, and sort of getting your mind around it, and that is uh, good friends of mine would say to me, what kind of crazy diet are you on? Sure. And um, I'd be like, well, it's this diet. I met this guy, Charles D'Angelo, and he's, well, what kind of crazy diet is this? We're, we're, and I'm like, so finally I'm like, yeah, it's a crazy diet where you eat right and you exercise. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and so how are you doing? How are you losing all this weight? What are you doing? What's, what, what are you doing? Well, it's this weird diet where you exercise and you eat right. But then I say, but hold on a second. The minute you fall off the diet, <laughs> You gain you all gain the weight, weight back on. So you know what? Don't even try it. Now, do you mean that there's some evolutionary mechanism in place that's going to make you gain the weight? Absolutely not. What happens is if you start behaving consistently in a manner that's not going to bring about a healthful life, you're going to have a body that's not healthy. Right. It's as simple as making the changes. But again, the whole point is how do you get yourself motivated to come to this realization that you need to change and to be consistent throughout so that you can have that type of really dramatic change. Uh, birthdays and anniversaries at, at... Or losses, deaths in the family, right. changes of jobs. Right, all of those things. But going forward in 2012, uh, birthdays at the office and anniversaries, and uh, you know, instead of bringing uh, a dozen bagels or a dozen donuts, why not bring in a dozen uh, celery sticks or, <laughs> or, or apples, right? I mean, you know, there's simple things. You, you can, hey, here, have my great apple. You know, I just went and bought an apple. Here, have or an apple. Or bring a fruit basket or something like that. Bring right. a helpful choice. And most importantly, make sure that what you're doing is consistent. I think where people get stuck is they do things some of the time, and we're a product of what we do most of the time. Right. So if you are doing the right thing most of the time, you're going to start to experience positive changes, and you're going to start to really have the quality of life you want. Lastly, one of the things working with you, which really you come to appreciate food. You really in, actually, instead of starving yourself, 
you actually appreciate the food. Well, you're food never more. hungry on the program. You're never hungry, but, but, but more importantly, you appreciate the food and you savor the your sandwich. The and variety. You savor them. I love those shakes. And then your, your refuel night, which, you know, you're not depriving your body of great food. You're actually looking forward to that Energizing Friday the night. body. Energizing the body. Where you're recharging. saying, you know what, I'm going to go out and make a steak and a, and a, and a baked potato, and I'm going to have a this, and I'm going to load up, and I'm going and, and to go to dinner, and I'm going to order this, and I'm going to order that. And so you actually appreciate food much more You've than you do when you're not actually eating. And it. you feel the implications of the food on your body. When you have something that's it's non-nutritive, really you realize it. You wake up the next day, and I've had clients report they feel like they're hungover yeah. the next day it's after really eating true. a lot of junk food. They don't touch alcohol. It's really true. It's just from putting those non-nourishing foods in their body. It's it's amazing how, how your body reacts. All right. Uh, Think and Grow Thin. Think and Grow Thin. It's on Amazon. It's at Barnes & Noble. Anywhere you want to go and get it, go get it. And the most important thing is that anyone that's tried things before to know this is different than everything else out there. This is not a diet book. It's a system of thinking of how to change your relationship with food and exercise so you can succeed. Uh, also, charlesdiangelo.com, and what's the phone number? 314-495-3228. Think and grow thin. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, 925, Big 550, KTRS.